the factors that shift the demand curve the factors that change the demand curve are the following <laughs> the way that you can remember this easily is the factors that shift the demand curve are bestie <laughs> I know it's corny, but it's a really efficient way to remember. You'll know how your besties, best friends change the things that you buy. <laughs> That's why it will shift the demand curve. Bestie stands for, for buyers, expectation of future prices, substitutes and complements, pace and income. So I will explain each of them. Buyers, number of buyers. Remember that the demand curve is derived from a summation of individual demand curves. So if there are more consumers, the demand will shift to the right. Very easy. The more number of buyers, demand will shift to the right. Less number of buyers, demand will shift to the left. Expectation of future price. If you think that future price of chocolate that you eat every day is going to soar up, double its price a week later, then we are all going to run to the store and panic buy and hoard them. When expectation of future prices is high, demand increases right now. And also, when expectation of future prices is low, then people demand less right now. Like when you know that your favorite cosmetic brand is going to be on sale the next week, then you don't buy it right now. So when expectation of future price is high, demand will shift to the right. When the expectation of future price is low, then demand right now will shift to the left. Substitutes and complements. Substitutes means that it can be replaced by something like a substitute teacher. So Coke and Pepsi would be a classical substitute because I can't tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi. I only drink Sprite. <laughs> How would substitutes shift the demand curve? This is actually quite confusing for many people and it's going to be on the test. So I will draw a graph. Look here, there is a graph of Coke and Pepsi. Let's say that Coke's price was first $1. Now Coke's price increased to $2. Pepsi has just remained its price with $1. So Coke's price has increased to $2. What happens to the demand of Coke? It's a price change so that the demand curve doesn't shift. It's a movement along the demand curve. It's a change in quantity demanded. So it would go like this. The Coke's price was $1, now it's $2. Look what happened. When it was $1, the quantity demanded may be like 100. Now with the with a $1 increase, so the price is $2. The quantity demanded has decreased. So it's actually a movement along the demand curve. It has moved from here to here, from A to B. Well, that's what happens to Coke's demand curve when there is a price change. The substitute of Coke is Pepsi. So let's see what happens here. If you go to the mart and see that Coca-Cola's price has increased to $2 and Pepsi's price is still $1, what do you pick up? You'll probably pick up Pepsi. I would, like I can't tell the difference. So what will happen is that more people would demand Pepsi. So what happens is a shift in demand curve to the right. It's not up, it's shipped to the right. So what are complements? Uh, complements is something that you need both in order to work properly. For example, I got this example, nacho chips and salsa sauce. So these are complements. You can't have nacho chips without salsa sauce. It's not complete. You complete me. <laughs> So these are complements, remember? And just think about it. When the price of nachos has increased so much that you can't really buy it anymore, it's, would you buy salsa? The demand for salsa will also decrease. And the quantity demanded of nachos will decrease as well because it has changed its price. The price is too high. Now I'll draw it in a graph. Nachos and salsa. What happens here, the price of nacho is like ten dollars from five dollars to ten dollars so the quantity demanded of nachos will decrease from like a hundred to twenty so it's a movement along the demand curve from point a to b 
But what happens to the demand curve of salsa? Since people are consuming less nachos, they will be going to be buying less salsa. So salsa's demand curve shifts to the left. To the left. It's not downwards, it's shift to the left. Just remember that the price change will end up with a change in quantity demanded and when the price of the complement goes up, the demand for another complement will decrease. We have another one, taste. Demand for gloves, for example. In the summer, the demand for gloves will probably decrease, so it will shift to the left like this, gloves. And in the winter, the demand for gloves will increase because people demand more gloves when it's cold. Remember to label them all. Income. Like I have a really rich friend, like crazy rich. And how she feels about price is really funny. You just get rid of the zero in your price. So for example, if a meal costs like $20, for me, it would feel a little bit expensive, but it would feel like $2 for her. Um, <laughs> yes, as you have more income, demand for any normal good will increase. If you're drawing a normal good, increase in income will increase its demand for normal good. I will tell you what a normal good is. Normal good is anything that we really buy, actually. Anything that, any goods that we want to buy are normal goods. With higher income, you would actually demand more. Demand will shift to the right. It makes sense. But inferior good. So I will tell you what an inferior good is. Inferior good. This is a demand for inferior good. Inferior good is something that you won't buy if you have more income. So for example, when I was in university, I didn't have a lot of money. So I would actually eat instant noodles and instant kimbaps when I was hungry for dinner. It basically costs like $3 for dinner. As I got to earn more money, then I could afford a decent dinner at a restaurant. So I never eat the instant kimbap or instant noodles that sell at the convenience store anymore. They are inferior goods for me. So when income increases, I demand less of the inferior good. That's inferior good. Like secondhand goods. If you're earning more money, you don't need to buy a secondhand good or a really cheap food just because of its price. So as income increases, demand for for inferior good decreases and it shifts to the left. Okay, so you know what inferior good and a normal good is now. So recap on what we've learned. The factors that shift the demand curve are bestie. The besties affect our demand. It stands for number of buyers, buyers, expectation of future prices, substitutes and complements, taste and income. So these factors change and shift the demand curve. Prices will only change the quantity demanded of that good. It's a movement along the demand curve. So just remember that. And why is the demand curve downward sloping? Because of substitution effect, income effect, and diminishing marginal utility. So these are the things that you mainly have to remember for the demand part. So thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful to you, please like this video and please if you have time, subscribe to me. It would be a great encouragement for me. So thank you and have a good day. Bye bye.